Uh, welcome back to the Care Team Podcast, uh, where our go-to verse is Romans 12, 2, change your mind, change your life. And uh, we are uh, here today with some special guests, uh, Steve and Laura Gettelfinger. Uh, say hello. Hello yeah. there, folks. Hello. Good to be here. <laughs> we are so glad to have them on today, and uh, we're going to be talking about veterans and uh, veteran recovery, and uh, they have a really wonderful, beautiful ministry uh, that helps with veterans, and so we're going to get into that here shortly. But before we do, we have a, a soft start as normal, and uh, so I have a couple questions. I know right now we're in the uh, in the summer, and so a lot of things a lot of things can happen during the summer. A lot of you know uh, memories can come back, and you know thinking about our childhood and things like that. So uh, as we reminisce about the summer, I have a couple questions for everybody here. Uh, what was the best summer vacation you ever took and, as a kid? Why? Ladies first. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let me think about this. Gosh. I'm going to have to say, Tommy, that ooh, prior to high school, so I'm going to say I was middle aged, uh, middle school aged, mm-hmm. and my parents would take my three brothers and myself and my grandma and grandpa oh, to wow. Florida, mm-hmm. all in one car oh, wow. to spend the week. Car. All in <laughs> what? a car. In a <laughs> car. Yeah. But boy, what memories those were. I'll never forget seeing grandma and grandpa holding hands at the ocean's edge. Oh, mm-hmm. And you know, just enjoying the waves. So yeah. I'll have to say those fam- that family vacation. That's great. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I guess uh, we didn't take a lot of vacations, but I remember some pictures from where we went to the Cincinnati Zoo a couple times and uh, oh, uh, Gatlinburg mm-hmm. and oh, up yeah. in that area. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. I know for us, like our, our big go to for vacation was was Florida and just going to the beach, staying at my my grandparents' house. They 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 had a small place in Winter Haven, Central mm-hmm. Florida. So we'd go there and then. We could easily go to the beach or we could go to like Disney World. So, yeah. Yeah. We went to the Florida of the Midwest, okay. South Haven, Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, if you've never been there, the beaches really are, oh, yeah. are wonderful. And we went uh, there several years in a row. So we had friends that we knew there and uh, the area was familiar. And some of my best memories are just hours on the beach there oh, with yeah. family. And, and uh, believe it or not, unlike the Illinois side, Michigan gets warm enough on that side to swim and really enjoy oh, it. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. nice. Good. Oh, fun. So we just uh, we, we just had a, a pretty pretty intense heat wave uh, the last few days here in southern Indiana, and so um, you know, a lot of times people have you know they think about ways to cool off during the summertime. And so one question I have is, what was your favorite go to summer treat growing up? And I'm gonna send it over to Tom. On yeah, this one. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Well, I'm gonna tie it in because I heard you talking about pools earlier. Yeah, um, Grandma and Grandpa had a pool, so yeah. my favorite memories to go over to Grandma and Grandpa's, hang out with them, swim in the pool come in out of the pool into the air conditioning and actually you had to put a blanket on because you were so cold yeah. and then eat a big bowl of ice cream oh, so that was yeah, my, yeah. that was that was my favorite can you see can you see Perfect. me in an afghan with a big bowl of ice cream Perfect. What, one of my favorites was and, and the clarksville swimming pool doesn't exist anymore now it's a like an aquatic center they redid it now it's a tennis court um, um but they used to have uh, the snack shack at the swimming pool and i thought it was the coolest thing was to get a frozen Snickers from that snack shack because you couldn't get a frozen Snickers anywhere else. No. Or at least I, I didn't think you could. <laughs> oh, perfect. So. Yeah, well, we, we grew up on McDonald Lane, so we could ride our bikes to Zesto. Oh, yeah. Oh, get nice. a big old chocolate shake and oh, yeah. go home and have that with a couple of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Oh, yes, man. Sir, yeah. <laughs> and try to get over that the rest of the day. <laughs> you had me at Zesto. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Yeah. Ooh. Gosh, I can't think of so much as a treat um, as far as something to eat or drink to keep us mm-hmm. cool, but we I'd love to go to the creek bed mm-hmm. with my brothers and just dig around for critters, you know, minnows or yeah. even snakes when they come out. So needless to say, I grew up being a tomboy and those kinds of things don't bother me so much. But that was that was a way to keep cool, yeah. play in the creek bed. Awesome, awesome. I love it. I love it. Well, uh, as we dive in today, uh, as we mentioned before, we are going to be talking about veterans and veteran health and, and serving veterans. And uh, uh, Steve, Laura, can you all um, t- tell our listeners a little about, well, first about yourself. Tell us, you know, how long you've been coming to Northside, you know, uh, your, your background, et cetera. Okay, I'll start with that. Um, gosh, uh, we were going to um, to a different church um, and just felt like we were not being spiritually fed. Um, you know, shame on us a bit, I guess, for letting it 
for letting it go as far and as long as it did go. But we had friends, dear friends, who had been coming to Northside and would kind of share with us. I guess um, we were open to listening to them. Praise God for that. So in 2012, uh, kind of out of the clear blue sky, we looked at each other and said, you know what, let's run down to Northside and see what it's all about. So since 2012, then, um, we've been coming and so grateful and blessed that our kids come and their children, so our grandchildren, Mm -hmm. and, you know, they just don't miss. So what we see the kids getting spiritually, but our grandkids getting Mm -hmm. spiritually in this environment is just above and beyond what we could have even imagined. So that puts you together 10 years. That's awesome. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 And mm. along the way, you know, we've invited friends. So we've got a whole crew that come down. <laughs> <laughs> that come down. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks awesome. for asking, Tommy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, the so the other thing we were going to talk about was your all's ministry. And uh, I, I, I want to give you guys some space to talk about that. And I know it's uh, to help out veterans and uh, to serve veterans. And we talked a little about about your all's ministry before we got started. So, but for our listeners, uh, help them understand your all's ministry. What is it? Was it called? Where do you meet? How often do you meet? Yeah. Uh, and you know, it's, and it's know. a cool story about even how you got involved. Yeah. So start, oh, yeah. start us, at oh, the, yeah, yeah, start yeah. us at the beginning and, and paint the picture for us. Well, really the, the very beginning probably goes back to my brother who was killed in Vietnam mm-hmm. in 71. And, uh, the guy he served with contacted my parents uh, it's probably been 30 years ago now. And uh, he wanted to come visit mom and dad and visit his grave site just to bring some closure to everything. So uh, we met Wendell. And uh, later on, maybe another 10 years later, maybe, maybe 15, um, there was an event at um, Fort, Fort, Campbell. Fort Campbell, yeah, where they had um, dedications of monuments for Korea, World War II, and Vietnam. Mm-hmm. So they had arranged for some of the guys that had served together to uh, meet there for that dedication. But you got to remember that when all this was going on, you know, cell phones, internet, you know, when they tried to find somebody they had served with mm. back when they first got out of the service, it was phone books and making phone calls. Wow. Like like wow. Wendell, Wendell went through a phone book and just started calling Gettlefingers in wow. southern Indiana and finally found somebody that knew what he was talking about and directed wow. him to my parents, you know. So... Um, they met there for the first time, had a bit of a reunion. And then from that point on, they started meeting every year. And then that's when Wendell oh. called me and said, Hey, you know, you need to, you need to get in this group. And I said, man, I didn't serve with you guys. You know, he goes, no, th- these guys need to see you. Mm-hmm. And, uh, of course I was, uh, honored and blessed to have that opportunity. So we went to uh, the first few and, uh, you know, talked to guys that served directly with Tom mm-hmm. or maybe in the same unit at another time. Mm-hmm. Uh, talked to the guys, the guy that went out and recovered the bodies when he was oh, killed. Wow. Mm-hmm. It was him and four of the guys. So uh, it would really opened my eyes to, and then you could see in them the uh, physical and mental issues that they suffered from. Really the physical ones were obvious. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, that was kind of a first step. And then, uh, then we got started with, um, her brother, large brother, Ed was involved going from there. So. Now, is this that, is this all springing from that same group? They're related. So, um, well, there was no, no relationship between South Dakota. And, oh, oh, okay. Uh, and, that's uh, what I was asking. Group. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. No, that's all right. But, I'm just uh, curious about that. But it kind of, when this opportunity came available, we had already seen the need. So it kind of prompted us to to get involved. Well, thank you very much for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's our honor and privilege. And so um, I have two brothers who are very um, gifted when it comes to machinery and welding Mm -hmm. and that that type of things, those types of things. So they uh, put their minds together, their hearts and souls, and built, uh, I'll call it a contraption, that will, yeah, take um, veterans who have lost limbs, arms or legs, or who are paralyzed and cannot physically get into a field to hunt. So uh, these two brothers, Ed and Kenny, built this um, contraption that will literally be pushed out in front of a side-by-side. 
so um, that the person that wants to go deer hunting or rabbit hunting or pheasant hunting uh, doesn't have to be hauled in their wheelchair in the back of a pickup truck and try to hunt. Mm -hmm. So they... um, they came up with this uh, idea and went with it and and built one of these. It actually did it for uh, uh, Landon for Pres- Turner. Well, so, Landon Turner wrote yeah. in, but Presnell mm-hmm. was the guy that had the property in yeah. Martinsville, Indiana, mm-hmm. and that's oh, who wow. they were doing it okay. for. It wasn't for South Dakota oh, yet. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. So, uh, so Ed uh, also uh, one of the brothers uh, raises hunting dogs, mm-hmm. bird dogs. So he's got, this is crazy the way that this worked, but I know it was all God. Ed, is a veterinarian in Indianapolis, has a ranch in South Pier, South Dakota. Mm-hmm. So Ed was talking to his veteran veterinarian about this contraption that, that he built. So his veterinarian said, Ed, there's a guy in South Dakota. His name is Ken Corco, and he runs, runs the Ranch Ministries. And he caters to veterans who suffer, first of all, PTSD, and then, um, you know, who are physically um, incapable of hunting pheasants during pheasant seasons, season. And then his main goal is to bring them to Jesus Christ. So That's awesome. It was an, it's an amazing yeah. story. Yeah. Let me butt in real quick because Absolutely. I think contraption doesn't oh. even. <laughs> it, I, this thing, I, I've only seen pictures, but I want to let our listeners know it is the coolest thing ever. Uh, I it, it amazes me. You'll be amazed by it. Tommy's gonna um, include some pictures in a in a post that will be related to this, so that you'll be able to take oh, wow. a look at this thing if you're listening to us. That is. Um, but I just had to butt yeah. in with that, Laura, because it is the coolest. Invention. I mean, it really is. And I'm, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it now for the very first time, and I'm just thinking, like, this is amazing. And, and we will definitely post this picture, if that's yeah. okay with you oh, guys, yeah, yeah. Uh, to share it with our listeners. So. Absolutely. The picture you're looking at, Tommy, I believe, is a veteran who lost uh, both legs. Oh, okay, that's another one. But we have one. The veteran had lost both legs and an arm. And if you know veterans, they like their guns, and they like to hunt. Yes and amen. Oh, yes, uh, yes and amen. So, you know, what a way to um, just try to try to be of benefit or to bless, you know, a veteran. So anyway, and then just real quick, my brothers are still perfecting every year when we go out for the pheasant hunt mm-hmm. in October and when they use them. This contraption, Tom. <laughs> they they see what could work better, whether it's um, shocks. And correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, but yeah. but stronger shocks under the tires so that it's mm. not such a rough ride. Mm. Because this thing will go through the snow, rain, sleet, hail, ice, whatever. Because we've been there and done that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's yeah. a lot of underbrush and kicking oh, the birds oh, yeah. up, right? You pheasant yeah. hunt, yeah, yeah. 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 So these guys are moving through the field just like the guys that are walking through the field. And they're, that- and they're out there where they can get a shot, you know. That is awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. Share share with us. Um, I know you probably have many, and I know I've heard a few, um, but share a poignant story with us. May and, and obviously leave names out, et cetera. But just some of the neat things that you've seen happen uh, in in the lives of both the volunteers there and uh, the gentlemen that are coming and getting to hunt in this way. Yeah, well, um, I have one thing that that I had with uh, Ken one evening was um, we had gone to dinner. What he does at the end of the hunt and everything, after we've got everything kind of cleaned up and ready for the next group coming in, he'll take everybody to dinner. There's only a couple places there you can go to accommodate, you know, there's 10 to 14 people. Mm -hmm. So I sat down next to Ken, you know, and um, he looks over at me and he goes, uh, what would you do differently in your life? And of course, I'm thinking from a business aspect because Ken was a, a, a realtor and pretty, and, you know, had a pretty thriving business before he just switched over to ranch ministry. And I said, "Well, you know, I'd probably um, probably do more with real estate than what I've done." You know, he said. Uh, I looked at him. I said, "What would you do?" And he goes, "Basically, he said I would have started saving souls sooner." Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's like I felt like you know, real little at the time. Can I change my answer, please? <laughs> <laughs> And I learned not to sit next Restart to Ken at dinner. Is over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but uh, I mean, that's just how he thinks. I mean, mm-hmm. and so when people are there, whether it's the volunteers or the vets, sometime during that weekend that they're there, he will get a long time with those people. Now, he might say, hey, I'm running town to get some supplies. Why don't you give me a hand? 
and then boom, you know, he, I mean, he is, he's on him just like that, you know, and then sometimes he'll take him back to the cross. They have a big cross back in the back where people can drive nails in as a, you know, indication of leaving something behind or trying mm-hmm. to get over something. And there's mm-hmm. a, there's one with a nail right through the middle of a cell phone, nailed to this big cross. Yeah. And that was because the veteran had become addicted to pornography on his cell phone. Wow. And he nailed that phone to the cross. It still hangs there today because he left that at that ranch that day. Yeah, so from the time people started arriving until everybody leaves, Ken Corco is on a mission to speak to everybody there and bring them to Jesus. How often do they do this? Oh, my gosh. They start, Tom, I've got to actually uh, have a schedule here. It's it's real tough um, because so many people want to go and volunteer that when the veterans are there, they get, of course, you know, the bunkhouses for bedrooms for themselves and their caregivers if need be. Um, so through the course of the, the entire year, they've got work weeks that anybody can go. As a matter of fact, this past April, I took a, a group of gals from Floyd Knobs and Starlight. There were eight of us, and we went for a week and spring cleaned for Liz. Wow, that um, is cool. You know, um, so yeah, there's always something going on. Now, during pheasant uh, season, it's every weekend back to back. Is it really? So mm-hmm. sometimes yeah, Liz, goodness. his wife, God love her. <laughs> yeah, she is an amazing woman. We suggested uh, one of the first times, of course, when we go, we go to do food. We can just do food. So we are blessed that we get to go twice a year, once in April and October. And the entire week we, we prepare and serve breakfast, lunch, and supper. So if Steve can put up with me telling him it's time to do dishes, well, then we make it through the week. (laughs) But um, I suggested to Liz maybe that we get dishwashers. And she said, oh, no, 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 Laura, there's a reason we don't have a dishwasher. And that is because Ken will ask for a volunteer vet to come back after each meal and help us with dishes. Mm -hmm. You just wouldn't believe the way that those guys or gals will open up standing over that kitchen sink doing dishes mm, yeah. and that's just part it's of pretty amazing part yeah. of his ministry Shoot. is yeah. to um have a chance for veterans to get to know each other and to share their experiences because they've been there and done that yeah reminds so, me of uh, what doug often says about missions you know uh what you're doing is a mission uh yeah. and when you go on mission you think you're going to bless someone else uh, and it's you who walks oh, yeah. away blessed. Always. Uh, you know, yeah. I hope I bless them, but I know I'm walking away blessed, right? I know I know. isolation is um, it's such a danger for, for many people for many different reasons, but specifically for veterans. Uh, I, I know, like, I've, I've talked a little about my, my history, and I've, I've seen a little more than other people. I've seen a little less than other people, but I'm, I'm right there on in the middle. Um, but I, I, I know that feeling of being alone and feeling like you don't have anybody to talk to you. Um, you know, I, and, and, um, offline I'll, I'll talk about, you know, some of the reasons why I did not specifically go see anybody when I was in, but I mean, there, there was a real fear about going to see someone while you're currently serving. And depending on how long you, you, you let that just like pile up, mm-hmm. it's like, by the time mm-hmm. you get out and you actually see somebody, it's like, you've got, you've got some, you know, years worth of trauma or just like, it's, yeah. it's like compounding trauma on top of trauma. And then it's like trying to dig that out and repair that. So I, I'm just so grateful that, that, that veterans can come alongside other veterans and other, other mm-hmm. folks just to, to have that community, to, to have an outlet, to have those discussions instead of feeling like yeah. they are alone. And that, that's a really key part of the whole trip is that, so they get them in there like on a Friday evening, Saturday morning, we'll have breakfast and kind of meet the veterans and mm-hmm. all the volunteers will be around, you know, and then the very first thing after breakfast is they head over to the bunkhouse, mm-hmm. just the veterans and then they share their stories oh, and they might, wow. they might be over there two hours. They might be over there five hours mm-hmm. and we just kind of wait until they're done. And then when they're done, then we'll take them out hunting. But, mm-hmm. and then they, then Ken will make it a point to partner a volunteer with a veteran mm-hmm. to kind of spend that day with them or the time, whatever you're doing, pheasant mm-hmm. hunting or whatever, and kind of try to get them to open up and talk to But, but they really have some, oh my gosh, they have some, we don't get to get involved in those conversations, obviously, mm-hmm. but uh, Ken always you know, feels like it's very, very helpful for those guys like you're talking about. I love it. I the love la- it. the layers of ministry, right? Yeah. I'm looking at everything from helping someone who's had these horrific injuries to hunt, but that's really, and that's probably 
the most exciting thing to people, but to me, when I'm hearing cell phones hammered to the cross and people meeting Jesus for the first time and veterans helping veterans, I've talked to you guys multiple times about this, and I don't know why, but it's striking me today just all the levels that this is hitting yeah. on. And I and I and I wish we had a whole more another hour to talk about this, Tommy. Talk a little bit, um, and then I want to come back to you guys about how people can support and get involved. Okay. But before we do that, Tommy, mm -hmm. I'd love you to to talk about a little bit of what we've done at Northside here specifically in our own community and what you're looking to do going forward. And then let's kind of transition back and talk a little bit about some yeah. of the synergy here. For sure, yeah. Uh, no, I appreciate you mentioning that. Um, so uh, in the past, there have been uh, a handful of things. You know, um, I don't want to, I don't want to discount anything, but there was no military ministry. There was no overarching like let's try to align things up and let's try to springboard from one thing to the next and really try to build on each other. Um, and and that's not a ding. That's just kind of where we were at. We didn't really have a military ministry, and and we we currently have a military ministry, a military support ministry. Uh, it's in its uh, infant stage right now. We're, we're still trying to figure out like what is the need and how can we do that um, in a uh, how can we do that in the context of our church in Southern Indiana. Um, and so we're still working on that. But uh, so within that, there, there's a couple things where we've we've done, and then there's uh, some things we're working on. Uh, one of the things we've done is we've stood up a a, a class called Reboot. And so um, it's reboot combat recovery, and I always tell people too uh, that word combat I think throws people for a little bit of a loop because they say, "Well, I was in the service, but I never saw combat, or um, you know, I, I didn't see much in combat." And so, um, so I always encourage people not to look at the word combat except for just to know that we're talking about military. So when you see reboot combat recovery, think military. Um, and so that it's for anybody who is who has served in the military, whether it was National Guard, Reserves, active duty. Uh, it's for spouses. It's for combat veterans. For non-combat veterans, and uh, because we all have trauma. Like I remember my first, uh, I had a I had a handful of duty stations, but none of them were really like my full time duty station before my first one, because uh, I was in training and this and that and everything. Anyway, long story short, my first real duty station. We lost a soldier, I want to say an average about one soldier a month, so about 12 soldiers a year, and we weren't going to combat. We It was just training accidents. It was, uh, wow. you know, people um, weren't familiar with the environment, and they would flip a vehicle, and they would crush a soldier or something like that, you know, or uh, somebody would get shot, you know, during a live fire exercise, things like this. Uh, so that can be traumatic. I mean, you you, you know, you're, you're doing some training. You're not expecting to lose somebody in your unit, and now there's somebody who – um, who's not with you anymore uh, for one reason or next. So that, that is trauma, and that's not combat trauma. Uh, but it's it's a 12-week class, and it helps navigate through a lot of those traumatic experiences. I mean, even some of the training that uh, that we had to go through, uh, again, I, I had a little more training than some people and not quite as much training as other people. Uh, but some, some of that training is pretty traumatic. I mean, um, you know, I remember one of the things that, for me, I just remember being delirious after uh, it was either seven or eight days, maybe it was nine days of sleep deprivation. So we had 15 minutes of sleeping every night for eight yeah, days. Minutes. And by the end of it, you're just Jeez. delirious. And thankfully, they didn't, they didn't have us operating heavy machinery. But we were still <laughs> like, you know, our, our brains are going left and right. And we're trying to like think about combat. And we're trying to train up and all this stuff. You know, other people, they, they had, you know, they intentionally broke their bones during training. They, they intentionally... Mm. Uh, were slightly, um, well, I want to say, uh, heavily interrogated during their training, you know, uh, which can be traumatic. I think even just listening to you, Tommy, and someone who's who's not served, it just highlights the need for a military ministry. Yeah. Because just like we talk about in a lot of our care ministries, I don't want to go so far as to say it takes one to know one, but there's some sense to that, right? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. there's some sense to if you've been through that, Somebody out there is listening to you, maybe many somebody's right now shaking their head mm -hmm. because they can relate to you. And as as you were talking about the ministry out west, and um, and so talk a little bit more about what you're hoping to build yeah, as we go sure. on. Yeah. yeah. So basically, we want to we want to create space. We want to create an opportunity for veterans to come together, to heal together in the name of Jesus for, for their good and God's glory. 
at the end of with every ministry we have, we want to bring glory to God in everything we do. That that's that's one of our ultimate goals. But we want to connect people to to Christ. Uh, some people maybe they're may, maybe this coming to the military support ministry. Maybe that's their first group they've ever been in. Uh, for some people, that's the case. They're they're just not in community. So that would be like their introduction to community. Um, you know, serving opportunities. Maybe they're not serving. That that's a great opportunity for them to serve, uh, or just to. Uh, you know, and, and it could be serving the church as a whole or serving other veterans by just listening. Uh, because uh, as we were talking about before, it's so important for soldiers, and I shouldn't say soldiers because that's the army, but like for military service members, service men and women to, to be in a group, to be heard, to, uh, to know that they are in a safe place. And, and that, that's another thing too. We want to create a safe environment where people can, uh, can feel like they can actually have those conversations yeah. and have that outlet. Yeah. yeah. As we're wrapping up, and I just want to thank you again for coming in and sharing your hearts, Pleasure. sharing your ministry, your experience. Um, we want to see, uh, I, I hope this is the beginning of a, a building a relationship between the ministry and our church community and maybe the greater community here. Um, tell us how we can get involved, how we can support, uh, specifically financially, but otherwise as well. And if you would, give us the name again where it is kind of, you know, just a, an overview and then how we can get involved. And, and I'll make sure that on, on the podcast, at least on the Facebook, so I, on all on all of our platforms, I can at least put that information in there so people can get connected as well. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, it's Ranch Ministries in uh, Pierce, South Dakota. And, um, yeah, I mean, there's uh, they got a huge website that uh, gives you an opportunity to contribute. And, uh, you know, what we'll do is talk to uh, Ken Corco. We'll be out there in October. And uh, just tell him what you guys have going on here at Northside, and see if we can't um, put the two together somehow or another. That'd be great. That'd be, that'd be yeah. great. Yeah. 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 I mean, Absolutely. they're always obviously always looking for volunteers. I mean, a lot of times when we're out, not a lot of times, every time we're out there, they got multiple projects that need to be completed. So, mm-hmm. guys that are handymen or electricians or plumbers or anything mm-hmm. like that are very helpful. Mm-hmm. Well, and and I I love your all's heart for partnership too because that that's the thing is there's there's so many things for veterans and sometimes we don't know because you know, the information just didn't get to somebody for one reason or another. Mm. And so yeah, just, just partnering is, is so critical. And specifically bringing, bringing Christ. Yeah. Um, you know, I love, you know, you see things advertised on TV and I, I love that we're in a time when we actually do, we were talking prior to the podcast, how there was a time in this country where we didn't really support veterans. Mm-hmm. And so I'm glad we are in a time where you see support, but, all the more important that we n- know that they know Christ. And yeah. so I, I um, while I want to support anything that supports veterans, I'm really excited to support something that is bringing Christ to, to that community. And I would, I would challenge anybody that goes out there and talks to Ken Corco, see if they can avoid talking about Christ. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not going to happen. He laid down the challenge, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's yeah. not going to happen. You know, I, uh, as we were talking before the podcast, one of the, uh, this was explained to me. I uh, I was telling somebody a while back, and I can't honestly, if you're if you're listening, I apologize. I can't remember uh, you know, who said this, but uh, I was talking about um, you know, how it was weird not being a soldier for the longest time. I mean, like when I got out of the army in 2017, just the idea of like disconnecting from that identity was really hard, and getting back into the civilian world. Um, and he, and he goes, well, he goes, you're still a soldier. He goes, you're a soldier for Christ. Mm-hmm. And so uh, one of the, the passages that, that we use in the military support ministry uh, talks about the, uh, the whole armor of God. And I just kind of want to read that over because we're all soldiers in God's, ar- in, in the, in God's army. So, uh, you know, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in, in the evil day, and having done all to stand firm. Stand, therefore, having fastened the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And so, you know, and I just think it's so important, you know, when we think about veteran health and, and taking care of veterans and protecting veterans and equipping veterans. When you look at passages like this, as as soldiers in Christ's army, as, as, as servants in his kingdom, uh, the whole armor of God, everything is for defense except for the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And so like you got all these different things that make up, you know, the armor of God, but all of that is for defensive purposes, even coming down to the way that they, it talks about standing. And so as 
as a, a military ministry, you know, partnering with uh, with ranch and uh, and ranch ministries and partnering with other organizations like Reboot. You know, we just want to strengthen. We want to protect veterans because we know that, you know, right now veterans are are uh, twenty two a day are, are committing suicide. Oh. Wow. You know, and so that you know one a day is is too much, mm-hmm. but it's twenty two a day is what they're averaging. And so we just want to protect and, and, and help uh, veterans and guard them. And so I'm, I'm so grateful for what you guys do. I, I truly am. And so thank you for, guys, thank you, thank you both for coming on. And I, I want to give you all the final word. Oh, my gosh. Um, I'll have to comment on the, on the statistic of the um, suicide rate. Um, that actually was the very start of the ranch ministries. Mm-hmm. Ken and Liz have a son who served in the military, and when he came home, um, he had so many friends that were committing suicide. Yeah, and his right. father said, you know, we need to do something. We need to do something about that. Hence the beginning of the ranch ministries. I love it. That's yeah. good. That's good. Thank you both. Mm, thank you. Well, I, as we close out, um, Tom, do you mind praying this out? I would love to. Thank you. <laughs> Heavenly Father, um, we are so grateful as always that uh, we have an opportunity to um, reach folks through this podcast, people that may not uh, attend a church or have the opportunity to learn about these topics in any other place. And we're grateful for um, your servants like Steve and Laura. And Lord, I've gotten to know them over the last four years, and I can honestly say they are very much servants and love people. And um, just to hear their hearts when they talk about uh, the veterans and ranch ministries, Lord, uh, is just uplifting and hope filled. Um, and exactly what I think you're looking for in your people. And so, Lord, we do. We lift up Ranch Ministries. We lift up Northside's uh, military ministry. Uh, Lord, we pray that it reaches um, the veterans that it needs to reach. And, Lord, as we were speaking earlier, uh, most importantly, that people who don't know you get to know you, Lord, to know your love, to know your faithfulness, to know uh, that you are God and that you care for us and you want heaven to be a crowded place. Mm. And so help us always to keep that first, uh, Lord, that we are putting on the full armor every day so that we may uh, be of maximum service to you and to others in the kingdom and bringing more people into the kingdom all the time. Lord, we um, just ask as we close today that um, if uh, you know a veteran, if someone's listening, Lord, and they know a veteran, that you would just, um, that you would soften their heart to their neighbor, to their veteran, to the people they know, that they would reach out, that they would make sure they're doing okay, that they would feel a part of and not alone. Lord, we pray that you'll strengthen all ministries and all groups that are reaching out to veterans. Thank you again, Lord, for this day that you've made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, to our listeners, thank you for joining us. And you can join us every other Thursday morning at 7 a.m. on YouTube, Amazon, Apple, Spotify. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Facebook. Uh, you can also go to mynorsa.com slash care for additional resources. And we will have links uh, to uh, the, the ranch ministries and additional programs we talked about. And we love you guys. We'll catch you next time.